dear confrères, I would like to congratulate you from the bottom of my heart for the uh, 100th anniversary of uh, the arrival of the first missionaries to India. It is a wonderful occasion to reflect on the past, to reflect on the present, but uh, even more to reflect in the future. The missionaries hundred years ago and then throughout the, the years were building the communities, they were opening uh, new, new centers of evangelization. They were, they did serve and are serving in so many ways. And now we who are experiencing these fruits, we are invited to look into the future and uh, with this missionary spirit. Anything great and glorious, lasting and laudable has a humble beginning, centered on a story. Individuals and institutions, events and incidents, ideas and artifacts, vision and mission envelop the story. The story keeps developing when the visions become missions, dreams become realities, challenges become opportunities. Moving from strength to strength, here comes once a story of 100 years, the Vincentian Saga in India. The Vincentian Saga unfolds with the birth of St. Vincent de Paul in 1581 at Poi, a village in France. He becomes a priest in 1600. The first 12 years of his priestly life was uneventful like any other cleric of France. But later, he turns towards the poor and becomes a champion for the cause of the poor, building up a world of charity, touching the lives of people, mitigating spiritual as well as material poverty, and bringing smile and sunshine on the faces of the poor and oppressed. All this begin with preaching ministry in 1617 at Folloville, a village chapel in France, and that led to the foundation of the Congregation of the Mission in 1625 to serve the poor. Good morning, Father. It's time for breakfast. Good morning. Father, what are you thinking about looking at this flex board? I am just recollecting the great event of the arrival of Vincentian missionaries to India. 100 years ago. It has been a journey with immense trouble and of course with the blessings of God and with the blessing of our founder Vincent accompanied the missionaries. Father, can you inspire me with the story of our Vincentians? Yes, it is my pleasure. The Vincentian missionaries came to India for the first time in 1781. It was then that the Portuguese Vincentians reached the Western Indian shore as a formator's diocesan seminary at Goa. But that was a short-lived experience. However, it is the arrival of the Spanish Vincentians from Madrid in 1922 that marks the solid Vincentian presence on Indian soil, responding to the invitation of Propaganda Fidei. The Vincentians took up a mission in India. The mission territory then consisted of the southern part of Bengal province and northern part of Madras province of British India. Ecclesiastically, the northern part of the present Odisha was under the pastoral care of Jasuts from Calcutta and the southern part under the MSFS missionaries from Vishakapatnam. Driven by zeal for evangelizing, Four Vincentians left Madrid on 27th November 1921. They were Father Jose Maria Fernandez, Father Valerian Gumas, Father Ramon Farrar, and Father Manuel Coilo. 
Nearly after a month, they arrived at Colombo, Sri Lanka on 24th December 1921 and presumably celebrated Christmas in a different soil. They crossed the sea by a steamer and on 26th December set their feet on Indian shore. Then they took a train to Madras, present Chennai. On 27th December, they left Madras and arrived at Vishakhapatnam on following day. In the final lap of their long journey, they left Vishakhapatnam on 9th January 1922 and reached their promised land at Behrampur on 10th January 1922. On 11th January, Father Ramon Farrar left for Katak and the other three for Surada. Thus began the Indian Vincentian mission history. Total Catholic population then in the area was about 700. Most of them were Irish or Anglo-Indians who were working for the railways. For our missionaries, learning the languages and so many of them, Odia, Hindi, English, Kui, for communication was a struggle number one. Equally challenging were coping with cultural differences, food habits, living in extreme climates and that too when on mission trips through heavily traveled. forested jungles with wild animals freely roaming and above all fully exposed to malaria and yellow fever but their spirit of sacrifice and indomitable courage prevailed against all these odds which every missionary worth the name is called upon to endure these missionaries walked mostly used bullock carts occasionally to cover long distances and horses to reach other places in the years that followed more missionaries arrived the second group of 3 in 1923 the third group of 5 in 1924 and the fourth group of 7 in 1925 as the number of missionaries increased three canonical houses came to be erected and that was in 1925 These houses were Surada, Behrampur and Katak. In the same year on December 8th, the Indian mission was raised to a vice province. Father Jose Maria Fernandez was appointed the first vice provincial. Father Jose Maria returned to Spain a few years later and he was martyred during the Spanish Civil War along with Father Pedro Pascal Gracia Martin. they were beatified in 2017 father it's really inspiring that spanish vincentian missionaries who worked in our lands are martyred and beatified yes most of them did not go back to their homeland on 18th july 1928 katak was raised to an independent mission from visakhapatnam and came to be known as katak mission and father valerian gumes was appointed its first apostolic administrator by this time the indian mission had of 15 priests and four lay brothers laboring in katak berhampur digi known today as mondesoro surada and khurda road gradually the vincentian works gathered momentum with more missionaries arriving and the vincentians had their first mission established in gudogoto founded by father valerian gumes mohana was the second mission also founded by father gumes he visited mohana in 1928 then purchased piece of land and began to stay there in a hut his zeal and love for the people bore immense fruits by 1937 a church was constructed and blessed at mohana the vincentians also paid attention to rejuvenate the missions that were growth stunted such as katingia and padangi a new development in the growth of the mission was promoting local vocations a seminary started in 1935 at rasalkonda which is now known as bhanjanagar in 1937 katak mission was elevated to a diocese and father florencio sans was appointed as its apostolic administrator and 
in 1939, Father Florencio Sanz was declared as the first bishop of Cuttack. Cuttack Diocese had then 20 priests and 3 lay brothers, all of them Vincentians as missionary personnel. They had the cooperation of Sisters of St. Joseph of Annecy in three centers and attempts were being made to bring the Daughters of Charity also from Spain to the mission. In those days, the mission work was so difficult. So, missionaries invited the Daughters of Charity to assist them in the mission land. The Daughters of Charity arrived in India at Calcutta on 7th February 1940 and Beharampur on the 12th of the same month. The first batch consisted of six sisters. Two more joined six months later. They began their stay at Gopalpur. By 1942, the total number of Spanish Vincentian missionaries who came to the Katak mission numbered 43. Among them, nine had written to Spain and eight had passed away in India. It was the year 1942 that the shrine of Queen of the Missions in Beharampur started and the whole diocese was dedicated to Mary the Queen of the Missions. Father Paul Toba became the vice provincial on 25th January. During his short tenure of office, he made a number of important contributions. He constructed the church at Mondasore, the diocesan minor seminary at Banjanagar, sister's house at Raikia and St. Vincent's house at Gopalpur. In the year 1947, India became a free nation. The same year, we the Vincentian celebrated the silver jubilee of their arrival in India. Father, a St. Vincent's building at Gopalpur on sea constructed to mark the jubilee. Yes, come, I will tell you the rest of the story. In 1947, as India woke up to the independence, the Vincentians celebrated the Silver Jubilee of their arrival in India with the inauguration and blessings of St. Vincent's Gopalpur. About this time, Bishop Florencio Sanz requested to be relieved of his episcopacy and Father Paul Tober, who was then the vice provincial was appointed bishop in 1949 father vinancio marcos became the next vice provincial but he passed away after being in office for a year on 18th december 1950 subsequently father gerardo conde was appointed vice provincial he was enthusiastic about promoting vocations even from other parts of india in particular south india nangal korchu perku mathrame father gonde petti ariyamal adhegam nangal ku prathamayittulla ella karyangalum parnu tharuvar ചെയ്തും എങ്ങനെയാണ് സഭയെ മുന്നോട്ട് കൊണ്ടു കൊണ്ടുപോകേണ്ടത് അതിനുള്ള എല്ലാ വഴികളും അദ്ദേഹം From 1950, the promotion of local vocations gained vantage when Father Fernando Ebelchieta was staying in Kerala to train the Vincentians of Siro Malabar Rite in their novitiate. In 1952, a batch of 35 boys were recruited and began formation at St. Vincent's House, Gopalpur. In 1952, the land for the internal seminary was purchased. which is better known today Stella Maris incidentally this landed property happens to be the first land registered in the name of the congregation this was a phase mark for numerical growth for the vincentians in 1953 father angel peno became the first director of the internal seminary with 13 novices Missionaries continued to come from Spain until this period and the total number of missionaries from Spain were 56. In 1957, Bodopoda Mission was established landmarking the 300th anniversary of St. Vincent 
in 1960. The first Indian Vincentian to be ordained a priest was Father Januarius Nayak, who was ordained on 21st June 1959 in Spain by Bishop Emeritus Sands. Nineteen sixty five was an important year for the Vincentians, expanding to the areas which form the present diocese of Balasur with an agreement signed between the bishops of Kolkata and Katak. During nineteen sixty eight, Balasur was declared a new apostolic prefecture with Monsignor Jacob Vadakavitil CM as the prefect. It is around this time that the missions Baliguda, Kotogoda, and Muniguda came about. In 1967, we were blessed with donation from Mrs. Menages, who donated a large house that belonged to her mother, Mrs. Amstead, at Gopalpur to us Vincentians. That was the beginning of Equinas College, that is now the regional philosophate. In 1966, a new mission serving mostly the villages of Khond tribe was initiated at Sri Rampur, which was later shifted to the present Jubaguda. The present provincial house, Vijay Bhavan, was constructed in 1969 that became the province headquarters. On 6th January 1970, Indian Vice Province was raised to a province by Father James Richardson, the then Superior General, during his visit to India and appointed Father Thomas Urdangarin as its first provincial. In 1974, the Holy See bifurcated the Diocese of Katak into two, carving out of it the Archdiocese of Katak Bhuvaneshwar and Diocese of Behrampur. Father Thomas Tiruthalil CM was appointed the first Bishop of Behrampur and Bishop Henry de Souza became the Archbishop of Katak Bhuvaneshwar. Two major concerns of the province in 1970s were the growing Saura tribal mission in Behrampur diocese and the new missions of Balasur prefecture. Thanks to great missionaries like Father Joseph Mulan, Saura missions emerged one after another, beginning with the Christ Nagar 1975, Mary Nagar 1979, Vincent Nagar 1986, Suladi and Rautpur. Father, when did Indian origin Vincentians took over the province administration? Yes, that is a relevant question, I will tell you. In 1973, the province got the first provincial of Indian origin in Father Michael K. From 1973 to 1979, some of the significant milestone in the province. In 1970, land was purchased to open a mission at Raigada that developed into a school and hostels. In 1975, a new house was opened outside Odisha at Keralapuram in Kollam Diocese of Kerala. A conferer for the first time sent to join Fizzy International Mission, Father James Tekanad pioneered the venture. Formation program got boosted with the starting of Jyoti Nivas Minor Seminary at Baripoda in 1978. The name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My memories of the Spanish missionaries coming to India are vivid, pleasant, and grateful. Their arrival in Katak Mission was a turning point in the life of many people. Christians and non-Christians alike. I still remember with the pressure Rector and Bishop Paul Toba, whom I considered my father. He was very fond of me, supportive of everything. And when he died, I really shed tears. 
Ever since I left home, I have never wept. But this time, tears simply flow down my cheeks. He was a fatherly figure, encouraging, joyful, supportive to everybody. God bless all of you. Father Anthony Netiquet was elected as the provincial in 1979. The major milestones during 1979 to 1985. Vincentian's entry into Tamil Nadu at Ascension Church, Chennai was in 1982. Vincentian's entry into Andhra Pradesh with foundations at Kannapuram and Gavaravaram. Another foundation in Kerala at Palakkad with the purchase of a rubber estate in 1983. Oragadam Parish of Madras Mailapur entrusted to Vincentian's in 1984. A temporary theology study house started at Pune in 1985. Father Matthew Onnat became provincial in 1985. Significant landmark during 1985 to 1991. A plot of land was purchased at Pune JD campus in 1987 for a formation house. Foundation of DePaul School Berhampur in 1987. Vincentians entered Karnataka state with acquisition of land at Belwadi Mysore in 1988 farm land at Lamtapur was acquired in 1989 foundation of Vincentian houses Kanchili was in 1989 Palal parish and school were entrusted to the Vincentians in 1989 entry of vincentians to west bengal at queen of peace toliganj in calcutta took place in 1990 foundation of saint vincent's school aminjikarai chennai was in 1990 dipal minor seminary was opened at mysore in 1991 odisha a registered society for social service was registered in 1991 Father Louis Mittatani was elected as provincial in 1991. Major milestone during 1991 to 1996. Tanzania mission started in Joshipur Vincentian Center was established in 1993. Pachani Center started in 1993. Vincentian's entry into Northeast in Manipur at Pang Mall in 1993. School started at Ukkunagaram in Andhra Pradesh in 1994. Kallal Boys Hostel inaugurated in 1995. Commission set up for the division of the province in 1995. The Indian province was bifurcated into North and South in the year 1997. Father, I have not visited most of the places in the North Indian province. Can you share with us the details of the mother province? Yes, I can. The North Indian province emerged with the bifurcation of the province of India in 1997. The first two years saw transfer movements. of conferences between two provinces in the years that followed north indian province expanded gradually with a focus 
on the new responsive areas. In Beharampur Diocese, Dhyana Kendra, a popular retreat center, was started in 1999. A new parish with hostel was opened in Kotagodo in 2000, the decade of 2001 to 2010. After the formation of the North Indian province, some new centers were opened and a few important changes introduced at older centers. The province had a major expansion throughout the Northeast India. A new center was started at Vilong in Imphal Archdiocese of Manipur among Maram Naga tribe in 2002, a seminary at Dimapur in Nagaland of Kohima Diocese was started in 2005. In 2007, parish with school and hostel was started at Bairabi in Mizoram and Nagisa among Wancho tribe in Arunachal Pradesh. Two more parishes with school and hostel were started at Derapathar in Assam and at Waka in Arunachal in 2008 and 2010 respectively. A new house at Bhuvaneshwar and a priest's home at Gopalpur were constructed in 2003. A parish was started at Canning in West Bengal in 2004. Deepal schools were opened at Joshipur, Odisha in 2005, at Gopalpur in 2006, at Toliganj, Kolkata in 2007 and at Canning in 2008. The decade of 2011 to 2020. During the next 10 years, the North Indian province witnessed further changes and growth. New two parishes with school and hostel were opened in 2011 at Kulardang and at Pailapul in Assam. On the occasion of Silver Jubilee of Pangamol, the first Northeast Vincentian mission, the Superior General Thomas Maverick declared Northeast as the new region in 2019. In other areas of the province too, new schools were started at Sampraram Kutu in Jharkhand 2012, Ambapur, Behrampur, Jaunpur, West Bengal 2014, Gopalpur 2017 and Abodapada 2018. A parish at Rangiam was taken over in Balasore Diocese in 2016. Two more centres were inaugurated in Northeast region in view of expanding the congregation of the Mission Ministry to Myanmar. A new centre was opened in 2021 at Jaldam on the Manipur Myanmar border. A parish with a school and a hostel is already there at Jaldam. Yet another parish centre has been inaugurated at Kanu in Arunachal Pradesh in 2022. Thus, continues the numerical growth and mission expansion of Northern Indian province. Father, I was not born in 1997, so I did not know many of the initial initiatives of the Southern Indian province. Can you elaborate to us the growth of the province? Come, I will tell you the story of 25 years of Southern Indian province. Years between 1997 to 2000. The Vincentian presence in the southern peninsula of India continues to grow to the rest of the subcontinent. The new province named as Southern Indian Province made its headquarters in Mysuru in the year 1998 and Father Sebastian T was its first visitor. With the initial preparations for the settlement, promotion of more vocations and along with the expansion of mission works, the province was ready to take a huge leap. St. Joseph Church 1998 Monosur in Tamil Nadu was entrusted to the pastoral care of Vincentians by the Chengalpet Diocese. The decade 2001-2010 In the year 2001-2010, to 2010, 
the following centers were added family of the new province Deepal International Residential School at Belagola in Mysore Deepal English Medium School at Ketepalli in Telangana St Paul School at Nimbahara in Rajasthan St Vincent's Seminary at Darkhast in Tamil Nadu Oasis the Social Service Society at Enikepadu in Andhra Pradesh Karunalaya the Priest Home and Retreat Center at Belwadi in Mysore St Vincent's School Molasu Diocese of Chengalpet St Vincent's Community Health Center at Singanagudem Diocese of Vijayawada Parishes are Catholic Church Mariyapura Diocese of Mysore St Joseph's Church Irusumanda Diocese of Eluru Immaculate Conception Church Tanimur Diocese of Neyattumkara Our Lady of Good Health Church Periya Kulattupatti Diocese of Trichy Saint Vincent's Church Velpore Diocese of Vijayawada Saint Joseph Church Kidarakuri Diocese of Neyattumkara Saint Joseph Church Namagiri Pettai Diocese of Salem CM College Janam Pet in Eluru a study house for the seminarians Brito Higher Secondary School at Kallal in Sivagangai Diocese the decade 2011 to 2020 the period between 2011 and 2020 is very significant for the southern india province as a province the numerical growth and mission expansion is remarkable the parochial mission an expansion is the following mount caramel church nedumpara diocese of punalur our lady of perpetual help kottapeta diocese of nalgonda saint michael's church anaikulam diocese of chutikorin our lady of rosary church mallavalli diocese of vijayawada catholic church jallipalayam diocese of mysore and catholic church at oragadam diocese of Chengalpet St Joseph Church Vajra Villa Diocese of Neyattumkara Educational Institutions are Deepal Degree College Mysore St Vincent's School Yerupalam St Vincent's School and Boys and Girls Hostel at Singanagudem Deepal School Achutapuram Getsemani Prayer Center at Vengavila Deepal Apparels at Mysore priest home at angamali in kerala 2017 the tanzania mission was raised to the status of a region the years between 2021 to 2023 during this period the province was ready to branch out to other countries for its mission and expansion malawi nepal and sri lanka are three international missions initiated by the province Thus, the Vincentian saga continues with enthusiasm and deep commitment to the mission. May Saint Vincent bless and guide us all. Yeah.